Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me here, and uh, especially in such a nice section. I really enjoyed talks by Norbert and Rami. Hope to be uh, at the level. <laughs> so uh, I'll be talking um, about design system benchmarking. Uh, I tell, uh, I call it uh, the complete design system. You will see why in a few moments. This talk is a bit of experiment uh, for me. As you can see, I don't show any slides, but I'm showing you a mirror board. So I hope to explore it together with you. And um, even though we are at React Finland, uh, this talk is not super technical, uh, but more product oriented. However, um, as a front-end developer and now design system architect, uh, being on the technical side, I often faced the, cha the challenges about what exactly you have to do uh, when uh, building design system and when documenting design system. And um, today I just uh, want to share uh, with you my findings, uh, hoping that it uh, would help you as well. So uh, just a few words about, uh, about me. Uh, as I said, uh, I have technical background, uh, but uh, for many years I'm deep in uh, design systems. Uh, as a technical specialist, uh, currently even as a product owner, as an architect, and so on. And um, I'm also by my nature, uh, I'm more like a researcher. So I really try to understand uh, the uh, b basics of the, of the things and design systems too. So over a few years already, uh, I built this and I call, called it the complete design system. Basically, this is a result of uh, analysis of different uh, design system documentations um, and uh, reverse engineering of uh, what they have, have built, uh, how they make their documentations and, and why. And uh, I really believe uh, that this is the way to learn uh, for us as humans. Um, of course, sometimes you can learn by a book, then you're directly told uh, what you are supposed to do. But in emerged topics uh, like design, design systems, are, uh, there is no book yet. Or if there are, there are very few. And uh, it's better to, like, to observe the reality uh, and to find what others are doing, uh, make your own tries, and then you find like, the truth. So um, that information that can be gathered uh, during this process, and ca it can be presented in different ways. It can be just notes. Uh, but I found it uh, nice to kind of uh, sketch a, a design system. Uh, I'm wondering what will be the sketch of my talk, because I consider what I'm showing sketch uh, as well. <laughs> so it will be the sketch of the sketch. <laughs> yeah. And as, uh, as you can see, uh, some sketch is ready, and uh, there are explanations of, of the chunks, and I, I would like to navigate through them together with you. So uh, in here, you can see a random page of a design system documentation. They usually have similar structure, like a header with some logo and main navigation. Then a sidebar, like you have in Storybook, but not only in Storybook, also in other docu documenting systems as well. And um, um, using this uh, sidebar menu, you can get into some pages and uh, uh, either with uh, text, some explanations, or a component page that, that, that you can see now on the screen. And again, the uh, body of the component page, it also uh, usually have certain structure. Like you can see, there are tabs here. This is uh, quite uh, often used pattern in design system documentation. And so on and so on. So uh, let's start with the header where you can see 
uh, this design system, imaginary design system, has some logo and uh, na name. And we can see that, uh, so basically, uh, some design systems uh, really invest into their own branding. So you can see a few examples here, like uh, Orbit Design System does that. Uh, they provide logo and favicon. Then another famous example would be uh, Polaris Design System by Shopify. They have meaningful name, like a, a North Star that uh, guides them through design decisions. And, uh, oh, for example, Aura, this is uh, one of my favorites. They, they have a nice slogan to communicate the value and create the mood when using the, the design system. And these are just a few examples. Now, of course, many other design systems have uh, uh, some branding stuff, but these few examples are enough to understand what pe people do and why. Okay. And let's continue with uh, the header. The last uh, uh, menu item here is about, and uh, in many design systems, they provide information about the team. This is what uh, this design system has. Uh, by the way, uh, by the end of the talk, you will get a link to that. And uh, uh, this is an observation I'm making, but I'm going to give it to the world, and you will be able to navigate the links uh, yourself. So each, uh, this uh, card is a link to the design system, and you, c you can see what exactly happens there. So for example, like as I said, this design system, it has a very nice page uh, with uh, the, the team thing. And so does Carbon Design System. I made some extracts, like screenshots, so that we don't need to navigate through all these uh, URLs right now. But you can see here, like, um, this is Carbon Design System team, a part of them. They, like, they, you can even see the, the faces from the website. So, Volkswagen Design System provides the contacts for the teams, and they're uh, especially necessary if uh, we are speaking about design system for a large company. So I guess they, they can be much more inspiration gathered from uh, these design systems. These are some highlights. Now let's go just one by one. So what you usually have in the, in the sidebar is some general documentation uh, of a design system and uh, the list of design system components. And in general, documentation often uh, started with uh, uh, about section or getting started section, and sometimes it's uh, divided for uh, getting started for designers, getting started for developers, and the contribution guidelines. So you can see that, for example, do it design system, it has the, that split. Uh, for designers, it has one uh, tutorial, for developers, another tutorial, and I find it very useful. Orbit design system has uh, links to support channels as part of the getting started documentation. So it, they kind of give a hint that it's, a, it's a, a good to get in contact with design system team uh, through the official support channels, even if you have just started. That's okay. And Carbon Design System, they provide a flow uh, how to report a bug or make a change proposal. I find it also very useful uh, because it, it, it is really good when design system is not just uh, one direction, but back and forth. It, uh, it's a product for developers and designers, and it's very nice to get feedback from, from them and uh, go through that feedback loop quite fast. And if we can improve this with just uh, one piece of information and documentation, that is, that's amazing. Then we have a list of components, usually. I will go through the components page separately, but for the list of components, I uh, can show you some examples. For example, this design system, 
uh, it has a list of components uh, as a table, and it also provides the statuses of the components, like you can see here. In, uh, if some components is not yet developed, you, you can see that. Or if it's in process, uh, in progress, uh, you can see how, how much far, like how far it, it went. In a uh, similar approach has the decathlon design system, but it groups the com components uh, by their meaning, like actions together, form elements together, and still it has these uh, st status checks, which I find very useful as well. Then uh, Polaris has uh, these cards uh, for the list of components, in, so that here you have uh, image uh, of a component and uh, short, short description. Also, uh, I guess for um, large distributed systems, it really gives a hint for new users or not so often uh, users of design system to navigate to a particular component much faster and find what they need. Uh, NOR design system has status of a component in uh, the sidebar. And even uh, n not only the component that has been released or is in design, but even plant components, which is, uh, again, next level of communicating with uh, your users. And uh, same has uh, Next.js, uh, ne Next UI built with ne Next.js. Uh, they have similar approach with the statuses, and here there is a bit of development hint. So I tried to select uh, mostly open source design system uh, for, for this catalog, so that uh, by reverse engineering, I or you uh, could find how exactly these or these feature was achieved. And particularly for these st statuses, there is a link to GitHub uh, and uh, you can find out how, how they get uh, so how they get it rendered at their websites. So let's move on. Besides components, uh, very few design systems uh, have templates of use, but I found at least one. So uh, this is this. Uh, I think it's uh, Audi design system. Yes. So basically, uh, they show how component is used in uh, context. Uh, I'm, as I said, it's not often happens, but I've heard a lot of feedback that it would be the most useful what uh, people want to see in the design system documentation. Then indeed, the content guidelines, because design systems are not only about uh, designs and development, they're also about everything you communicate to a user. For example, in ELISA design system, uh, there is a very uh, extensive uh, and uh, well-guiding explanation on how to do the photos and, and how to write text. Polaris provides uh, very good guideline for data vis visualization. Uh, not specific uh, libraries that you have to use to render graphs, but what are the uh, means and foundations to, to guide you when visualize the data. And let's move on. Uh, accessibility stuff. Again, uh, Elisa here. So uh, there is a separate, uh, very uh, large section for accessibility, different aspects of accessibility. It is open, and uh, uh, even if you are not using Elisa design system, uh, because it's like closed source, you still can uh, read uh, through this stuff, and it is very helpful in very useful for understanding the accessibility thing at all. Then uh, some design systems have a sample app, and this is recent discussion in uh, my uh, project we are involved now, so that the sample app is considered a design system product too, 
uh, not only the component libraries design system product, but some uh, starter, key, starter kit from which you can uh, run a new product too. And for some developers, it's uh, even more in focus than design system itself, because it's much closer to what they are doing. Uh, this is why, indeed, uh, very much recommended to have this sample app and to mention it in the documentation at some, maybe very first page, like Cryon's design system does. So I have a note here that uh, they, they provide it at uh, the center of their documentation page, giving a hint that this is something to pay attention at. And, uh, our design system provides uh, example projects in several technologies. If uh, your company doesn't restrict what kind of technology to use to run a new product, then it's definitely a way to go. And uh, another example, uh, besides sample app, they provide very nice playground so that uh, their users or potential users can try the components right away. And uh, again, I guess it uh, uh, lowers down the curve into the design system. Else? Uh, besides sample app, we have tutorials. Again, a few examples here. Do it design system has a link to tutorials at every component page so that you read through the component documentation, maybe some questions raise up, and then you scroll a bit down, you have tutorials right away. These are the same tutorials for uh, at every page, but uh, very well placed. And uh, Carbo Design System provides step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial how to build new product using the system. And again, our design system uh, provides code standards doesn't have to be a part of design system, but uh, for many developers, I think it's helpful when they can find everything in one place. And the last thing in this section is support, uh, like link to support channel. Uh, Orbit design system has a very, very well organized page uh, where you can really figure out how the support is given through which channels and where to write here and there. Okay, I need to know how, how much time is it? Okay, we have to, uh, 10 more minutes. So then I guess it's time to uh, go through uh, foundations and uh, the uh, body of this uh, component documentation page. For the foundation, I think I will be uh, rather quick because it is more design focused and uh, we are here more for development stuff. But anyway, uh, when building design system documentation, uh, it's often developer's tasks, even though you are documenting something about design. Because if you are building design system documentation on some custom solution like Gatsby website or Next.js website, uh, your designers uh, cannot uh, uh, fulfill it with content or it's very limited what they can do. So this is why it relates to developers as well. And uh, as you might know, design systems usually have that foundation section uh, about more, de more design stuff. And uh, it usually has uh, like general information, a page with the description. And that general information ensures that uh, design decisions uh, behind the system are conscious and uh, that fact uh, ensures the trust uh, of the users in the design system. Then about the foundation, you are supposed to uh, display the design tokens and uh, at least list them, maybe show them in action. And the tokens, as you might know, uh, could be of different kinds. Like here, I see that they might be colors, typography, spacing, icons, layout, motion, and so on and so on. So, uh, and it's surprisingly uh, huge range of uh, how you can display colors or typography or all the other tokens. This is why this section is so large. Uh, 
let's go, go only through the highlights. For example, uh, this is the screenshot of how colors are displayed in orbit design system. Uh, you can see there is a link here because uh, their website is built with Gatsby and uh, all the uh, documentation stuff is built with custom components, including that uh, color palette. So uh, the code is open. You can explore uh, yourself uh, how they render the colors and also have the functionality to copy the codes and the names of the tokens. Might be useful for you. Uh, same goes for uh, typography, uh, spacing. For spacing, uh, there are different approaches. For example, orbit design system, they just have simple list of spacing and values. But you can get more creative, like Carbon does. They uh, output the uh, spacing tokens as uh, such squares. For the icons, there are uh, example by Elisa. Like uh, the design system has this uh, full list of icons and the custom search to find uh, the icon that is needed. Uh, the lay layouts, also different approaches. So this, this design system uh, explains uh, uh, layouts in the guidelines section. And by the way, this is open source. You can navigate to the code and see how they render this page. Or decathlon system explains layout uh, shortly. This is a really short page. But uh, they provide list of tokens, spacing tokens related to the layouts. And maybe that's enough. So uh, about the motion, I find it very interesting how primer design system, they illustrate the motion with code. So you can see uh, nothing to uh, uh, in here because of the screenshot. But the code is open. And as a developer, you can see what they meant by this motion. Or uh, Spectrum uh, uh, takes another approach. They have this. Uh, uh, cards and on click you can see how, how the motion uh, is acting and same like for the logos you can uh, take stacks approach and uh, describe in very details so on logos anatomy how to use the logo when and so on yeah border radius again might be shown in the picture uh, in, in, on the screen like that, like some custom elements with uh, applied token render you element with specific border radius. So, and so on and so on. Now let's move on to this uh, documentation of the component. Uh, first of all, you can see that it, it has a badge. So similar to the badge from the side menu, uh, this is what several design systems do. And here there is an uh, example of this, uh, I guess, let me see, system. Maybe a yeah, Pinterest design system. They have these st statuses uh, on the every component page so that you can see if component is implemented for different platforms. Same you can do for design. Uh, development and uh, like if, if the component is released or not yet. And bo bonus is uh, article that explains uh, why and how these statuses uh, help uh, for the development process and communicating to design system users. Besides the status, you can have a version and other development documentation. Let's deep dive into that. So. Uh, the versions can be shown like that. And this really, uh, to be precise, uh, this design system uh, doesn't uh, make so that every component is a, uh, a package. The package is one for the whole design system, but they uh, communicate in which version of the package this particular component was last updated. So it might, might be very useful for your users, too. As you can see, there is a link to a changelog here. I will come to that later, but changelog must be 
also component specific. Few words to say about shared ownership. So many design systems, uh, they try to encourage uh, contributions uh, and uh, so does the do-it design system. They provide that uh, decision tree on uh, how to add a new component. Uh, once your users know uh, what to do, they probably uh, want to edit your documentation and uh, Fluent Design System provides this edit button that navigates you to markdown file to GitHub and you can uh, like ma make a pull request with, with your change. I think the same thing does Carbon Design System and that results in the, this nice thing, the uh, list of contributors. So, uh, Basically, we have a few uh, minutes. Uh, I will just briefly show you uh, the rest of the uh, board. So this section explains uh, how a component example can be shown, uh, different variants. Uh, you, you may choose uh, the variant of the component uh, using selector as such, or uh, you can play around with the U-ports Again, custom component by Orbit Design System. Or you find it interesting that uh, Polaris Design System shows HTML output, not only the uh, React code of the component. Might be useful, again, if uh, some product is not in React. And then, uh, indeed, uh, every component should have uh, documentation for developers like uh, prop table or arc table. Again, diff different options for that. And here you can see that example I was talking about, uh, they might be chunks of change log that belong to this particular component only. Uh, this is what Lightning Design System does. Uh, they might be links to GitHub, again, to this particular component, to a specific folder. And they might be issues related to this particular component. Yeah, so basically that's the brief over overview of how I achieved that. So these are the uh, links to the design system observed. I used uh, different uh, catalogs, uh, but um, lastly I mostly used this component gallery. I really recommend it. So you can search for components or you can search for design systems. For example, you can search for a button, or say a radio button, that's also fine. And then you want only open source, and you want only web components. And that gives you really a lot of source for research. So I, I use it every day, so I really recommend. And the same you can search for design systems, again, by technology, like say, I want to view design system. And here I have the list. So basically, that's it for my talk, as promised. You can find the board here. That's it. <laughs> Thank you.